Good morning, Summit Kids. How are you guys? Today is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you've been able to do your acts of kindness. If you didn't get the chance to yet, you can still do one today. Your act of kindness, think of something big that you could do for your family, like maybe set up a game night or take out the garbage for them or do something like that and show them an act of kindness. Last week, we learned about Philip who ended up serving God and telling others about him. And today, we're gonna learn about one of my favorite Bible characters, Paul, also known as Saul. So if you hear me say Saul, you hear me say Paul, it's the same person, don't get so confused. I know it can be so confusing, right? Two names? Anyway, Saul had kind of a vision problem. He had one that uh, gave him blinders. So he had this vision problem. He didn't have the right purpose. His purpose was messed up. He didn't have the right goals. His goals were messed up. And then that affected an even bigger vision problem. He, the eyesight kind. He couldn't see. What? How did that happen? Well, you're going to learn about that today. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to learn about you and learn your gospel and help us to take it all in. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that time again. Announcements, announcements, announcements. We have two announcements. We have our weekly activities. We have some really fun games out there for you and I want you to check them out on the Summit Kids Facebook page. We also have our student spotlight and I wanna know who you love or what you love. And I know you're thinking about it today because today we're focusing on love, right? The whole day, Valentine's Day. So send in a video today to the Summit Kids Facebook page and tell us who you love. Welcome back, new recruits. I'm so glad you're here. You guys had a great first week. I wanna say high five on that. Yep, keep up the good work. We're gonna continue to practice. We're gonna have drills. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna run. But you know what we have to do? We have to keep our eyes open. We have to have good vision, good purpose. If we don't have vision, if we don't have purpose, we can't see anything. We're gonna run into each other. We're gonna hit each other. Well, we're gonna do that anyway, but we're gonna do it more and we're not gonna hit the right people. So I want you guys to have your eyes open and focus on the vision and the mission. Are you ready? After Jesus died, rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, people in Jerusalem who believed in Jesus were persecuted or treated cruelly because of their faith. One of Jesus' followers, Stephen, was even killed. A man named Saul had watched in approval when Stephen was killed. Saul wanted to put an end to the church. He went into the believers' homes, dragged them out, and put them in jail. Many believers fled the city. Saul headed to Damascus to arrest believers there, but on the way, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Get up and go into the city. Then you will be told what you must do. Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So the men who were traveling with Saul led him by the hand into Damascus. Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, lived in Damascus. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. He told Ananias to go to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias knew that Saul had hurt many believers and that he arrested anyone who believed in Jesus. But the Lord said, go, I have chosen this man to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Ananias obeyed. He found Saul and told Saul that Jesus had sent him to help. Ananias put his hands on Saul and Saul could see again. Saul got up and was baptized. Huh. For the next few days, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus. He began to go to the synagogues to preach about Jesus. Saul told the people, Jesus is the Son of God. 
The people were amazed. They recognized Saul and knew he had wanted to put an end to the church. Now he was one of them. The Jews did not like Saul's message. They planned to kill him, so one night, Saul left the city. The disciples helped Saul escape by lowering him down the city wall in a basket. Saul was also known as Paul. Jesus appeared to Saul and changed him inside and out. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus called Paul, who was once an enemy to Christians, to spend the rest of his life telling people the gospel and leading them to trust in Jesus. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for Questions from Kids. Lauren from Neptune Beach, Florida asks, I don't remember when I met Jesus, but I believe in him. Does it matter? You know, Lauren, in today's Bible story, we saw that Jesus saved Paul in an amazing way. And then he chose Paul uh, to spread the gospel. And then we continue reading about Paul through the rest of, of the book of Acts and, and so many books in the New Testament. And we think about this conversion experience and we think, man, it was so powerful. Surely Paul remembered the instant he was converted for the rest of his life. And, and I believe he did. He, he references it a couple times later in Acts. But unlike Paul, you and many others struggle to remember perhaps the exact moment we trusted in Jesus. You know, I struggle to remember that in my life. I remember about when it was, but it wasn't like Paul's experience and I can't remember the exact moment I did. So here's the thing we have to keep in mind. It's okay if you don't remember the exact details like Paul probably did. Again, many people do not but hopefully you remember at least the general details. But even if you don't do that, it doesn't mean that you aren't saved. What I would encourage you to do is look for fruit in your life now. Look for evidence that you have placed your trust in Jesus before this, and they began to change you. So here's some things you can look for. Do you trust in Christ today? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he lived and died and raised again, and, and that you were a sinner and needed forgiveness, and that Jesus provided that forgiveness? If you believe that today, then you started believing at some point, right? How about this? Do you see the fruit of the Spirit growing in your life? Do you see peace and patience and kindness and love and self-control? Do you see these things growing, that God's developing them in you? Are you loving God more than you have before? Do you find yourself wanting to know God? Do you find yourself enjoying studying about God and coming to church and reading your Bible and so forth? How about this one? Do you hate sin more? Do you find yourself, when you sin, are you convicted of that sin? And, and do you want to be right with God again and confess that sin? All these things are evidence that you have trusted in Jesus. So you put them together, and if you see this, and again, keep in mind, it's a gradual process. And so you're not going to love God as fully as you might want to. You're not going to uh, hate sin as, as deeply as you might want to. You're not going to want to read your Bible all the time. But if you see these things growing, then that's a good example that you probably have trusted in Christ at some point, even if you can't remember the exact moment. Let me give you one illustration as I close this. It's sitting in a chair. Some of you right now, as you are listening to this and watching this, you, you might be sitting in a chair right now. Do you remember exactly when you chose to sit in that chair? Because at some point you did. At some point you chose to place faith that that chair would hold you up. But I guarantee, I don't think anybody remembers that exact second. But how do you know it happened? Because you're sitting in a chair. And that's what it's like for a lot of us when it comes to trusting in Christ. We may not remember the exact second we did that, but the evidence that God is working in your life now is proof that you did. So here's a question back for you. How is your life different since trusting in Jesus as Lord and Savior? Like I told you guys, this is one of my favorite Bible stories. Do you want me to tell you why? The reason why is because Saul was somebody who persecuted Christians, 
He wanted them gone. He had them imprisoned. He had them killed. Yet he gave his life to God. When he gave his life to God, do you know what happened? His sins were forgiven. And he went and told everybody about Jesus and told them that he was the true Messiah. Now think about it. If Saul killed Christians, I think that whatever I did wrong can be wiped clean, right? Because I know I haven't gone around killing Christians before. And not that any sin is better or worse than others, but it helps me to know that God forgives all kinds of sins. So I want you guys to realize that God can forgive your sins too, just like he forgave Saul's sins when he turned his name to Paul. So today we're talking about how our lives are different because we believe in God. So Paul's life was completely different. He was telling everyone that Christians are bad. Get away from them. Don't listen to them. And then he went and became a Christian and told everyone, Christians are great. The Messiah is real. Jesus is the Messiah. He's the chosen one. So how is your life different? I know that my life is different because when I see people who are hurting, I get sad and I try to help them. Those are things that I can look at and see that God has changed my life. How has he changed yours? Jesus saved Paul from his sins and chose him to spread the gospel. These missionaries were also chosen by Jesus for a special task of living in another country and telling the people there about Jesus. Remember the Balasingham family? We learned about them earlier this year. They served Jesus in Toronto, Canada. Here we have the Flores family. They served Jesus in Lesotho, which is in Africa. Next, we have the Kirkpatricks. They served Jesus in North Macedonia, which is in Europe. Meet the Moore family. They served Jesus in Zimbabwe, which is in Africa. Finally, we have the Turners. They served Jesus in Utah, which is in the United States. So we're gonna take a minute and we're gonna pray for these missionaries. God, thank you so much for the missionaries that you have around the world. I pray for these specific families, Lord, that you bless them that you help keep their eyes on you, that you give them encouragement, you give them the money they need to serve you and to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's that time. It is time for small groups. So if you click on the tabs up there, trekkers for first through third grade, trailblazers for fourth and fifth grade, you guys can open up the tabs and do the small group material at home. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.